Earlier, we saw some motivation on why there was this move from IMDD to coherent detection. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of this, not just why it happened, but what they are, the implications of them. How are uh, these two modulation schemes, how are they different? Let's give a, a contrasting look at them. So let's start coherent, sy coherent systems. How are they different? Let's start on the transmitter side. Well, I already mentioned that the big difference with coherent detection is now I'm going to manipulate both the phase and the amplitude. So because I've made the strategic decision to go with coherent detection, modulate phase and amplitude, right away there are some implications on the kind of equipment that I can do to make this kinds of modulation. First is, I'm going to need better quality lasers. And when I talk about better quality, I'm talking about the phase noise associated with that laser, the line width, the laser line width for my source. I'm going to re require better quality, lower line width, lower noise uh, lasers in order to uh, exploit this modulation of the phase. Makes sense. I'm going to put information on the phase. I can't have too much noise on the phase. I'm also going to have to use external modulators. Like I mentioned, if I'm going to modulate phase, I can't do that turning on and off a laser. So directly modulated lasers are no longer an option. I have to move to external modulators. And I can't do it, I'm going to use an external modulator that only adjusts amplitude. It's got to be an external modulator that, that, that uh, modulates phase. I have to now, I can exploit polarization. I want to exploit polarization, so I have to come up with some components on the transmitter side that allows me to do polarization multiplexing. All this together, the strategy, amplitude, and phase, means that I'm going to have to manage four radio frequency data streams instead of one. For instance, if I'm sending a binary signal to an external modulator, there's one RF signal and it's binary, it's going up and down. When I use coherent detection, when I use polarization multiplexing, we will see that I'm going to have to manage four RF data streams. So, of course, that means more components also. Now, receiver side, what's different with coherent? When I want to go with coherent, I have to now detect both phase and amplitude, and there are a couple things that are going to have to change. For instance, instead of using a single photodiode, single photodetector, I'm going to, um, sorry, a single photodetector, I'm going to have to use balanced photodetectors, larger quantities of them, and I'm going to explain to you uh, what I uh, specifically mean by this. I'm going to have to use optical hybrids, which allows me to access the phase, and I'm going to have to use dual polarization hybrids if I'm going to use dual polarization modulation. So we can see that there's quite a bit changing on the receiver side instead of having a simple uh, photodetector. We also as I mentioned, are going to require digital signal processing in order to achieve coherent communications. And that digital processing is going to be operating on the signal field. It's not on the signal power. For instance, when I use IMDD, I can also use some digital signal processing. But in that case, I only have access to the power of the signal, the intensity of the signal. I don't have access to the field of the signal. And it's having access to the field of the signal that allows me to use very powerful digital signal processing to combat chromatic dispersion and other impairments. So we're going to be discussing higher order modulation. And if I we gave one example of higher order modulation in terms of intensity modulation direct detection. It is intensity modulation, so I can only touch the amplitude. And I had on-off keying, which was the binary uh, version, or I had PAM, which was multiple levels. However, in both of those cases, binary, multiple level, it's still essentially a one-dimensional modulation format. The only dimension that I am modulating is the amplitude. And in also, when I use IMDD, the direct detection means I'm directing power, de detecting power. And power is only positive. So on, on, in addition to being a one-dimensional modulation, 
I'm also restricted in how I can exploit it from an information theory point of view, and that I'm only allowed to have positive uh, signals at the detection. Okay, so that's higher order mod modulation. It's possible with IMDD, higher order in terms of more levels, but in terms of dimensionality, it's still a 1D solution. We go to coherent detection, and now we're getting into a multidimensional modulation format. Now we're going to take our information, and we're going to map those information bits into a two-dimensional set where we, uh, the two dimensions are amplitude and phase. So because I am adding another dimension, it becomes a much more powerful uh, solution for communications, and I'm going to be able to accomplish more. So when I say that uh, you can do theoretically more with coherent detection, it's, it's basically uh, from, uh, due to this uh, change from one-dimensional to two-dimensional uh, manipulations. So the vocabulary we use for this higher-order modulation in 2Ds, uh, in two dimensions, is uh, quadrature amplitude modulation or QAM modulations. It's often what you see when we discuss coherent detection. I'll just throw in here some tricky distinction that can be confusing sometimes. 1D QAM is possible. It's less performing, but it's sort of in between these two. Because I can make it 1D, but I can, using coherent detection, have the one dimension be positive and negative. Because I'm not just um, detecting power, because I'm also able to detect phase. Because I can do that, I can get a negative number. So that I'm not just detecting power, I'm just detecting phase, even if I'm in one dimension. And we call that amplitude shift keying, just to sort of distinguish it from PAM modulation. So PAM modulation in optics, and the vocabulary can be different in uh, wireless communications, but in optics, when we refer to PAM modulation, it is with positive detection, intensity detection, uh, power detection. And when we use uh, one-dimensional QAM, or you could think of it as positive and negative PAM, or PAM with phase, then we call it amplitude shift kiki, just to try and have a vocabulary that helps us understand what's going on in this sort of tricky distinction. So PAM, all positive amplitudes, and ASK, positive and negative amplitudes. So I've talked about coherent detection, that we're going to detect both amplitude and phase. But how do I do that with my basic building block, which is photodetectors? How can I use photodetectors? Well, there's going to be three essential ingredients that we'll see when we look at photo reception, uh, photodetector architectures. And that's going to uh, re 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 require the use of a local oscillator. A local oscillator is a laser source which is used at reception. Of course, we all know we have to use a laser source at transmission, but with the coherent detection, we also require it at a receiver, that we need a light source at the receiver. We're going to exploit a simple 2x2 two two 3dB coupler also, but not just to 3dB, not just to get even power split, but also because we get to take advantage of a phase shift that also is occurring. And finally, we're going to talk about using balanced photodetectors. So these are the essential ingredients that we're going to use. The first one, the local oscillator, the reason that we need it is because it's going to beat against the signal. The coupler, as I mentioned, it doesn't just split the signal, but it's going to help us separate signals that are 180 degrees out of phase. And finally, uh, the balanced photodetectors are going to be used to allow us to get a differential value on the signals that are being received simultaneously.